In this video, we're going to look at the time dependence of a wave function, which is a superposition of individual states. So start by looking at psi n of rt, r being the spatial part of the wave function in one dimension, just x, two dimensions, x and y, three dimensions, x, y, and z, just representing whatever the spatial variables of the wave function are, and a function of t, function of time. And this is an eigenfunction of the Hamiltonian operator. So if that's the case, then the time dependent wave function psi n of rt is equal to the spatial wave function psi n of r. Notice I don't have this bar here in the spatial part as I do in the combined wave function. Spatial part times the time part e to the minus i e n t over h bar, e n being the energy of this eigenfunction of the Hamiltonian. And this whole function is a complex exponential. It's e to the minus i e n t over h bar, rotating around the complex plane. So that's the wave function. But what if I look at the probability density, the psi star psi, or magnitude of psi squared? Well, the complex conjugate of this wave function, if we assume, well, we're not going to assume that the spatial part is real, but in general, it, it usually will be. But we have our spatial part of our wave function times, we have an i here, so the complex conjugate goes to plus i. So this is the first case where we've actually had to deal with the fact that the complex conjugate of the wave function is different than the wave function itself. So we have psi star n of r times e to the plus i e t over h bar times psi, psi n of r e to the minus i e t over h bar. So this gives us psi n star psi n, the probability density of the spatial part of the wave function, times e to the plus e i times e to the plus i e t over h bar minus i e t over h bar, which is e to the zero, which is one. So the probability density as a function of time of our wave function is just the probability density of our spatial wave function. And that's why we call these eigenfunctions of the Hamiltonian stationary states, because they do not move over time. They just remain in place with a constant probability density. We'll look into this more in the next video when I show some animations of these states, and a lot of this will be made more clear, like what these complex exponentials do and how these end up being stationary while they're still moving in their real and imaginary parts over time. Okay, so that's for an individual eigenfunction. What if we aren't in an eigenfunction? What if we have a linear combination of eigenfunctions? So a general wave function, psi of rt is going to be a sum from n equals 1 to infinity of some coefficient. Uh, can be a complex number in general. Usually it'll be a real number. Coefficient times the spatial part of the wave function times our time part, e to the minus i e t over h bar. Notice that this is e sub n, so this e is just for this particular eigenfunction. So if we have a sum over all states, these e n's are different for each individual eigenfunction. So we can't, su we can't sum those together. We can't break them all up. So these, this time piece is different for every different individual eigenfunction. So keep that in mind. That's a very common mistake. So what's the probability density of this function, psi of rt magnitude squared, or psi star psi? So that's a sum from m equals 1 to infinity complex conjugate of cm, complex conjugate of the spatial part, times complex conjugate of the time part, e to the plus i e m t over h bar, times the wave function, once again, sum n equals 1 to infinity, cn, wave function, the spatial part, coefficient, time part, e to the minus i e n t over h bar. Okay, so we can combine this together into a single sum. The probability density is equal to a sum over m and n from 1 to infinity. Cm star Cn, each coefficient. Psi m star Psi n, each spatial part, times e to the minus i en minus em t over h bar. So I've combined the two exponents here, the positive and negative, factored out a minus still in front, en minus em. 
I'm going to eventually define the term delta em, which will be em minus en. So if the energies of them are the same, like an individual eigenfunction where en equals em, then this time part goes to zero. If they're different, then we get some kind of oscillation over time. So let's look more into what that is. So I'm going to separate them out into two different terms. One is a sum from n equals 1 to infinity, which are the stationary states. Cn star Cn times our stationary state uh, density, plus the pairwise sum where n and m are different. Sum m equals 1 to infinity, and a sum from n equals m plus 1 to infinity. So this is all unique pairs of n and m where they are not equal. This term gives us cm star cn coefficients, real, the spatial parts psi, psi m star psi m times, and now our time part becomes 2, because I've summed over two of these to get the unique states, 2 times e to the i delta e m n t over h bar plus e to the minus i delta e m n t over h bar. So the way I've combined these two together, I've combined the terms where m is the lower number and n is the higher number, and vice versa, into just a single pairwise sum to get these two terms in there. So if you notice, this is e to the ikx plus e to the minus ikx. That looks very similar to Euler's formula for cosine kx. So cosine kt is 1 half e to the ikt plus e to the minus ikt. So this term here is going to give us 4 from the 1 half cosine delta e m n t over h bar. So there's an oscillation over time, which is a cosine function, which oscillates between uh, the probabilities in the real part of this, or sorry, the probabilities of psi m, psi n, the overlap of those two, where it's going to oscillate, and the frequency of the oscillation is controlled by h bar, but it's also controlled by the difference in energy between the two states. So in the next video in the animation, You'll see states that are close together in energy. This oscillation back and forth between the states is fairly slow, whereas the higher energy difference between them, the faster the oscillation back and forth goes. So as I mentioned, delta EM, greater difference in energy between two states results in a greater and a faster oscillation between those two states that we'll see in that animation of that time-dependent probability density of the wave function.